Hi and welcome back. It's another rainy day so a good time to have another look at a piece of digital equipment. This time it's the TechServer 200 MC which is what's known as a terminal server. A lot of hobbyists probably are happy using the console port on the machine or an extra COM port but if you've got say 10 users or 100 users then you can't do that so you've got to have some method of connecting the terminals to the machines so the terminal server is what is used the terminals plug into the terminal server and the terminal server then connects on the network to the hosts using a protocol called a LAT LAT Terminal servers are very useful, they can be used for hooking up terminals to hosts or you can plug in dial-up modems to them or you can even hook up the terminal server to the console port on your VAX so that um, you can have a remote console. This is the back or the front, depends on how you want to look at it. Uh, eight RS-232 ports thick wire ethernet and some indicators. first one's power, the second one is a self-test, the third one is the software load and the fourth one is network activity. These machines have a, a, a ROM in them but the software is actually loaded over the network so they have to network boot in order to get going. Okay, after removing 11 screws, it's time to take the cover off. Up on the top we've got the power supply and the fans and the power input and uh, switching and circuit breaker. This is the power feed into the board. Here's a look at the main board. These cables go out to all the serial ports on the front. One thing of interest is the main processor, which has got 68,000 written on it. There's actually a few Motorola chips on this board. Another interesting point is that the Ethernet address chip isn't socketed on this. It's normally socketed on most devices, but not this one. Okay, back together again now. So we'll hook it up to the terminal. Use an adapter just to convert to our MMJ and for the thick wire we'll use what's called a Desta which is a box that converts from thick wire to thin wire. Goes in there and we hook up our thin wire onto that. Power and off we go. It's now attempting to boot over the network. And nothing will happen because we haven't set that up yet. Okay, we're now back on our back station and we have to install the software for the Dex Server 200, which has the name DS2033. So we do the install. Okay, the configuration utility is supposed to be in this directory. Yeah, there it is, DSV config. So 
So if we do a list, it should be done. Do an add. Call it the same thing. Make one up, that'll do. And the Ethernet address needs this for the remote boot. That's the Ethernet card to use on the back station. Fine, there's only one. Do a list now. Okay, time to try things out. And I just rebooted the DEX server and you can see there's a network request come in but the file is not in the right location so we'll have to fix that up. What I'll try doing is copying the sys file into the appropriate directory. So I've got this file here. like we're getting a successful load. Power on. Self-test. Three means it's got a load off the network. And then four's activity. The other thing we need to do now is to start up LAT on the back station. Spell it right. Now we'll swap over to the console on the deck server and see what it says. done. It's loaded at software and we're at the local prompt which every every uh, port on the on the deck server will get a local prompt. And we do a show services. Looks like there's some stuff there from many many years ago. It's been stored in uh, the non-volatile memory. It may take a little while for the machine to advertise. There it is, dig dig. So we can now connect to that and we've got a connection through the terminal server over LAT to our back station. If you look at the users, APA0 was our console session that we've been using, and here is our new logon on LTA5003, which is a LAT device, and it looks like I it had a name of Napier in the past. And the advantage of the terminal server is that if you want another session, you can just hit the break, you can and then you can go and connect to something else. I'm on the I've only got one thing running, but you can connect to anything else that's running, and then you can use the control six 
to flip between your sessions. So you can have lots of sessions going at once. As with any deck product, there's pretty good help. Another thing that's commonly done with terminal servers is to set up printers. A lot of printers have serial interfaces and you just plug them into a terminal server and you can set up your printer queues to, to point to them. Anyway, that's about it for the deck server. Hope you found that interesting and we'll catch up with you next time.